In this Lords of the Fallen review, we take a deep look at the Lords of the Fallen 2023 release that resets the stage for the IP and aims to put Hexworks and CI games onto the radar of Souls fans. How does the game compare to Lies of P? How long is Lords of the Fallen? What can you expect from the story, performance, and gameplay? Watch on to find out. The story of Lords of the Fallen is set in the same universe as the original game and takes place about 1,000 years after the events of the 2014 release. Adir, the god of the Rogar, or demons by human perception, has been imprisoned and sealed away to protect humanity by the followers of the god Aureus. But no prison can hold a god forever, and the wards are weakening. Reaching their righteous ways, the hallowed sentinels aim to restore the corrupted beacons that lock away the demon god. As a lamp bearer gifted with the unique capacity to step into the world of the dead and return, you are called to assist them in this task. A setting like this is not unusual for RPGs, however, I found the overall world building to be extremely interesting and well thought out. In Lords of the Fallen, there is a massive, complex, and intriguing world to discover, which appealed to the fantasy reader in me. Additionally, I appreciated that Hexworks committed to the dark fantasy theme and crafted their world and stories to create a consistent atmosphere that carries throughout the game and motivates you to explore and investigate. The story of Lords of the Fallen is told by means of some short cutscenes, dialogues with NPCs, item descriptions, and the activated stigmas that let players relive moments in time. Combining all of these elements, you will find a convoluted but interesting story with some exposition flaws. It is not difficult to piece together what has happened, and the events that have led to the situation of each NPC can be quite moving, but there are some unfortunately clumsy moments that take away from the intrigue and make it feel more like a video game. There are choices to be made in how to approach some NPC quest lines and ultimately several endings to discover, each with its own roleplay consequence. This element brings the story on par with other Souls likes and ties the exploration and gameplay into a meaningful experience, though the endings of the game leave a lot to be desired. Gameplay is the most important part of any Souls like, and Lords of the Fallen brings a good amount of genre fitting innovations that help it deliver a great experience. Exploration is one of my favorite parts of most games as I really enjoy discovering what is around each corner, gathering all equipment and items, figuring out NPC progression and quests, and ultimately uncovering how the developers tie everything together in their game world. In this regard, Lords of the Fallen delivered for me a truly phenomenal experience. The world interconnectivity is amazing, and the use of verticality is so exceptional that it puts similar non-from software titles that have attempted it to shame. Not only can you find multiple shortcuts, turnabouts, and surprise secret pathways in almost every corner of Lords of the Fallen, but the size of the world is quite mind-boggling. For comparison's sake, I love the world design of Dark Souls. Lords of the Fallen has a similar flow, but it is probably two or three times the map size of Dark Souls, and you can see this entire world as you explore, which adds a wonderful feeling of immersion. On top of this, the whole world was designed twice, as there's the Umbral Realm that can also be explored, has its own set of enemies and its own set of unique pathways, and is layered on top of everything. You spend less time in Umbral, as there are too many enemies and you only need Umbral for specific portions of progress, but the fact that it's always there and ready for you to visit is impressive. Tying up to size and exploration are of course the NPC quest lines and treasure pickups. In this regard, I felt that there was a very good progression of unlockable trainers, storylines, and loot to reward me for actually checking every edge of the screen. The combat of Lords of the Fallen is unfortunately somewhere the game should have shined, but does not. This is not to say the combat is bad, but it lacks a degree of polish that other developers have mastered, and Lords of the Fallen lags behind a bit in this regard. There are intriguing ideas like wither damage when you block, which is similar to Bloodborne's rally mechanic, or dodges in and out of range of enemies replacing a roll. The damage mechanics are simple and easy to understand, and the weapon movesets have good combinations with their R2 attacks into the combos. However, for the entire game, I could not shake the feeling of floatiness that you get when you overstep forward as you're swinging, which eventually puts you behind an enemy and forces an awkward 180 degree turn to continue attacking. There's also a horrible issue with the lock on camera that will prioritize things that are in the middle of your screen rather than your closest enemy. This means that if you're fighting several enemies in melee range, your aim may suddenly switch to a distant archer, and you'll start swinging at nothing and become wide open to attacks from the mob surrounding you. Another disappointing aspect of combat was the lack of enemy variety. This is something that may not be a deal breaker for most people, but it does eat into the long-term enjoyment of the game. There are somewhere around 40 enemy types, which is a bit above what Demon's Souls had at launch. The difference is that you meet most of these early on, and then they are used in most areas of the game, whereas in Demon's Souls you only encounter each type in a certain area, giving you distance from them as you teleport back and forth. Lords of the Fallen is also a much larger game than Demon's Souls, so you really feel the lack of enemy variety by the end. 
There are things that combat does well, however, and these should be noted. Magic and throwable item management is actually well implemented with powerful spells and items that give buffs to yourself and allies or deal damage, etc. The treasure distribution means you can use these frequently and almost with abandon, but still have to keep an eye on your usage in order to replenish between fights. Additionally, the combat style with different weapon types does change how you approach the game, so you can look forward to changing your character's focus and redoing your builds. Lords of the Fallen launches with 9 default classes, and players are rewarded with an extra 4 classes for completing game objectives. The extra classes can only be used in a new playthrough, but their equipment can be found in the game as well. Classes work like they do in the Souls games in that their only role is starting equipment and initial stat distribution, but players will find that the game is rather big and their wanted loot may be many hours from the start, so the choice can be important to match your gameplay and not have you wasting all of your vigor buying armor. Itemization for Lords of the Fallen follows a simplified Souls formula with stat requirements and scaling that apply to weapon categories, armor weight classes, and items to deal with damage types and build up status effects. The game has 15 weapon categories featuring 180 unique weapons, 3 different spell types with 60 unique spells, and I think I've counted 90 armor sets with really awesome fashion opportunities. This is without including the multitude of throwable items and consumables that can be used to enhance your combat experience. All of this together means Lords of the Fallen gives a decent amount of options to players to create unique and interesting builds. However, there may be some shallowness to this due to enemy weaknesses and resistances, which are sort of a rock-paper-scissors format. Coupled with this is the absence of infusions or skills on weapons as upgrades are a linear progression that simply improves the attack power and scaling of your weapon. Thus you'll find yourself using consumable items to buff into different damage types to compensate, which may get in the way of your dedicated cosplay as your paladin may have to use fire rather than holy to take on many enemies. To balance these things, weapons and shields do have runes that can be slotted and change several aspects from scaling to grievous strike damage or even mana or health regen on kill. These effects play into a build by doubling down with other effects you gain from rings, amulets, and consumables, but it may take players a while to get into them as runes are slottable only with upgrades and players must find them in-game. Lords of the Fallen is an absolutely gorgeous game that makes excellent use of Unreal Engine 5 and a very talented design team that has given the world a unique and appropriately grim look and feel. This is probably the best looking Souls game to date in terms of fidelity if you don't include Demon's Souls Remake, and it is infused with distinct personality. As I climbed to high peaks and towers, I truly enjoyed taking a moment to look back and see the entire world I had explored in beautiful detail. Unfortunately though, Lords of the Fallen suffers from a couple of performance issues and several bugs that might detract from the experience of players. While the start of the game was rather smooth and I could sustain over 60 FPS at 1440p on a 2080 Ti, later game zones had some drops in the 40 FPS realm that were quite annoying in combat. Devastatingly, the issues in these areas were doubled in multiplayer and I had to face many challenging fights against groups of enemies with a Blight Town level 20 FPS. However, there have been continuous patches during the review period and these things have only gotten better since then. A patch push just yesterday addressed many performance issues and these later zones now perform much better. Though they still have some FPS dips here and there, though not to the same degree of severity they had before. There are also some minor but annoying bugs that popped up during the review period including menu clicks not working, an item popping in and out of existence at the hub, umbral enemies becoming invisible but able to attack, and a random teleport back to a lamp while in the middle of a level. None of these were game breaking but they did give the feel that the game was not as polished as it should be and perhaps could have used a bit more time in development. Lords of the Fallen has a fitting and impactful music score that I very much enjoy. Idling in areas did not live up to the magic of some other RPG tunes but the boss themes were powerful and delivered that intense crescendo that I craved during these difficult fights. I have seen a lot of commentary regarding the sound effects and sound cues of the game, but I personally found them good enough, with nothing out of place and nothing outstanding. There was, however, one thing that I did find annoying, and that was the buzz of Umbral, a high-pitched sound that made me want to get out of there as soon as I could every time. I do know that the devs have announced that they will be working on the sound effects of the game, so we'll see what they do with it. Voice acting the game is truly a mixed bag though, with some incredibly good deliveries by several outstanding actors and some truly bad miscastings that unfortunately ruined some NPCs for me. There's not really much more to say about it. My first Lords of the Fallen playthrough took about 50 hours and I didn't find or do everything that was available in game. There are still zones I haven't visited, bosses I haven't fought, and NPC quest lines I need to further explore. And this is before you factor in NG+, that lets you continue playing with your existing character. The replayability of these games comes in several forms. Different builds, continuation into New Game Plus to unlock different endings, and of course multiplayer. There's a serviceable variety of builds to work with, and those who like to tinker and reroll will probably find a happy space here. 
New Game Plus will also give completionists a progression path to keep challenging themselves. Multiplayer is something that I actually love, and it is something I extremely enjoyed, even through performance and technical issues that were worked on daily. The implementation of co-op play in Lords of the Fallen is absolutely fantastic. You can summon random players, use passwords, or simply use your friends list, and you will find very few barriers and compare a starting character with an endgame one. Your summoned companion will stay in your world until they choose to leave or you kick them, meaning you can actually continuously play the entire game with your friends without the need to keep resummoning them. You will get enemy drops and vigor, they can use all of your services including the blacksmith and upgrades for the lamp and healing. But they won't get any treasures or boss remembrances, and thus will be locked out of some gear progression unless you opt to drop them items they may wish to use. Something I particularly liked about co-op is that while enemies are harder and can become more challenging, if your summoned partner dies, you can simply bring them back from a ghost right where they fell or from the checkpoint without resetting the level. I very much appreciated this as it felt like we were in it together. Of course, if the host dies, well, that's another story. All in all, I'm not sure how multiplayer performance will pan out. We had good days and bad days with no FPS issues sometimes and other days where we had terrible FPS drops and rubber banding. With a recent patch, I can say performance is much better, but because we have not had as much time to test it, it's really hard to say what sort of multiplayer experience each player will get. And this brings us to the ever-contentious pricing. When considering a game's price point, we take into account the amount of content available, the experience impact, and the value of purchasing a game right away versus waiting for patches or a sale. Lords of the Fallen is a content-complete game with some very well-done aspects and a mild lack of polish in others. For me, even with its issues, I had a great time with the game, and even though I have completed the game on PC, I have purchased a PlayStation 5 copy for myself, and I intend to play again with the community. This is because Lords of the Fallen delivered in exploration and atmosphere, and because I've seen the developers patch the game quickly and effectively based on feedback, but I think they will continue along that line, and we will end up with a very excellent product. Final Thoughts Lords of the Fallen is the first Souls-like to deliver a truly enormous and intricately interconnected world with addicting exploration, and a significant variety of discoverable loot that makes you want to find every secret the game has to offer. While lacking in combat polish and struggling with frame rate and netcode in a couple areas, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the game. I'm ready to play again, and I feel like any Souls fan looking for their fix is going to get something out of this game. Whether you buy it now or wait for further patches, if you enjoy the Souls genre, Lords of the Fallen is a game that I would fully recommend. No other Souls like to date has so thoroughly mimicked the Souls formula, and I mean that in the best possible way.